how to light a space is the key role of a cinematographer. But what if the time and location doesn't permit that? How can you use the natural resources at your disposal to achieve the look you want? In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how we did that with a recent commercial that we put out that was based around the concept of time. This commercial was shot on the Red Komodo in a combination with the PNS Kawa Anamorphics. This was our first time using anamorphic lenses in the setting and we absolutely loved the look that we got from these. In addition to the Red Komodo, we used the Sony FX3 that was seen for all the slow shutter shots. In this breakdown specifically, I'm going to be looking at mainly composition and positioning your talent in camera in terms of using natural lights that are on set. In this location, the track lights. In addition to that, I'm going to be breaking down some studio shots that we actually had time to light and show you exactly how we did them. This is the first shot that we're going to be looking at, which is considered the hero shot of the piece. And what we mean by that is not like a typical slow motion hero, but the shot that everybody agrees on that this is the best shot in the piece and this is what the base is of the whole entire project in terms of posts, the feeling, color, and anything like that. In terms of shooting environments and narratives like this, the first thing that I'm going to be looking at is being intentional with your shots and not just shooting anything. You want to be intentional with your composition and the first thing that I see here is leading lines. The leading lines of the track align with the lines of his body mainly and then you have some crossing lines here as well. So generally the lines are going this direction in the frame that just bring your eyes towards what we want to be focusing on is him finishing his race and struggling. Automatically, I'm just locked on his face when I look at this picture. The lights that you specifically see here are the big flood stadium lights that I was talking about at the intro of this breakdown and those are blasting down at him here. So I'm gonna position myself on the shadow side of my subject. This just gives me the most interest and the most depth in my image. So we have some shadows on his face here, on the, his body, the backside of his arms, deep shadows where it's closer to the ground, as well as any of his other body parts casting shadows on upon itself. And if you look at the light parts, it seems soft, and this is because of the colorist, but I can assure you that this is pretty harsh. The lights are just so far away that it gives you a kind of in-between between soft light as well as hard light. But this is a very sourcey light source. And then when I just look at this image and just drawing on it with all my highlights as well as shadows in terms of yellow and blue, you see that we get a nice checkerboard of light and dark parts of our image. If you go from left to right, from the ground to his arm, to the other side of his arm, to his face, we are constantly jumping between light and dark parts, which just helps with visual interest and making really good images. This is next shot in the sequence of the shooting order, not necessarily the edit. And this was just one long take of him finishing, coming down, being exhausted, dead tired, to getting up and walking back like he just finished, like it was nothing. We find that the best performances that we get from our talents or actors is when we do this method. If we have a bunch of shots in mind, for a specific scene, shoot it all once, get them to go through it, get them to flow through it, and then just, just gives you a natural, nice performance from action to action. And you can see that source light up here, and that is blasting down at our talent. And you can see more of it as a harsh source here, which is the edges, which you can see from the highlights of off his skin, shoulder, hair, just generally any part of the body. Again, we're looking at the backlight situation. Because our floor in this case is a dark surface and pretty much a color that you know doesn't really bounce a lot of light off, there was some correction that the colors had to do. Uh, we're dealing with a natural negative fill because he is so close to the ground. Uh, there's another shoot that I was on that I was shooting on a blue tennis court and there was so much blue in the shadows that we had to actually deal with. This is just acting as our negative fill and just gives us a lot of shadows on the shadow side of our subject, which is is great and what we're always looking for. Going into this running shot, this is the main example of positioning yourself for shooting anything that you have to use the natural lights on set. So this is my drawing of the track, which is a terrible drawing. And then these are the position of my lights and they're all facing towards the track. So in this situation, our position, our position of our talent is right there. And then I am shooting towards this way. So these two lights are acting as my main key light right here, as well as a hair light, which you can see on the back of him. And this is just goes to show that we did multiple takes of him running all around the track. So if I was in another position, say here, I would be either shooting in this direction 
or this direction here because I always want to be backlighting my subject. But you could see going from location to location and looking at some of these shots that the lighting could be a lot better in terms of the shape that we're looking on our face. There was maybe a five second window in some of these turns and on the track specifically where the lighting was considered the best. And this is an example of that right now. As you can see that we have a nice key light and a nice wrap across the face and a little bit of that Rembrandt lighting that we're going for. And then on his body, we have a nice highlight from our key as well. And then you can see here that we have a nice edge light from the backlight right here. And then if we look at our shadows, this is again a little sourcey due to the nature of the lights. We have a nice shadow going across his body from his head as well on the left side of his face. So we just had to basically time everything in terms of Ben's best performance as well as my best time to be studying on the gimbal as well. Uh, to get all these running shots, we're using a Segway in combination with an easy rig, an easy tilt system, and a DJI RS3 Pro. And this is another perfect example example of setting your scene up in the specific place you want to get the best lighting with the lights at hand. Generally with a five kilometer race, which is 12 and a half laps, the start line is here. So I'll just label it as an S and then the finish line is over here. Obviously not accurate because this is a not an accurate drawing. And to make this as realistically as possible in terms of the line direction, as well as authentic to what Ben does in terms of racing, we positioned our talent exactly right there. And this is just supposed to simulate the smart time of him doing his race. And here we have one source light there and one source light here, and it's hitting on both sides. But if you look specifically on Ben, you can see that the light is hitting here and not necessarily on the edge over here. But if you look at our other talent that you can see that the light is hitting here as well as hitting here. So this was more something that I like to call as a happy accident in terms of the light looking perfect on Ben and also the light looking perfectly on our talent here in terms of feeling as natural as possible, but as well as giving the shape that we're looking for. The only complaint or thing that we had to do in post-production or the coloring process was that this side of the frame was a little too distracting in terms of being bright. And this was because of all the spill coming from the other lights, although they were all in the other opposite side of the field. They're obviously very powerful and adding a, light, a lot of light to this side of the subject. So in post, we actually added a large vignette on this side so that my attention, as soon as I see the shot, because we're only seeing it for a few seconds, is drawn to the center of the image or the stopwatch. So I, when I see this image for a second, I look at Ben and then I also look at the stopwatch. I don't necessarily look at what's on the left side and find it too distracting. So this is just something that you can kind of look out for when you're shooting and then correct it in the post coloring process. So this specific shot I found very interesting because it was a very cool editing technique used. We wanted to add a lot of motion and speed into this. So the way that starts happening is picking up the edit with you using a lot of inserts, slow shutter, and then whips in motion that we got on set as well. So in this case, the camera movement is going towards this way and then Ben is running towards as he goes across the track. And I did a lot of alts where I'm whipping the camera as well as just keep moving forward along with the track so we feel that we're the track's perspective at this case or vice versa. And in this case here, this is actually two shots overlaid. The second shot that we're looking at is me aiming up on a tripod at the specific floodlights and then unlocking my pan and whipping back and forth to get inserts that the editor can use. We don't necessarily know where these sit in the edit, but we just want to give the editor a lot of variety. And what they did is use some blending modes, probably a screen mode because the screen was so dark or even masked it himself. And then he tracked the motion. He used the motion of the light to motivate Ben moving so fast as well as going into the next shot. I just thought this was a very clever editing technique that I necessarily wouldn't get there on my own. We brought in somebody else, Scott Edwards, to edit this piece, and it was an amazing thing to do because he brought his own creativity, his own view. It's hard to produce a project, direct a project, shoot a project, as well as edit it at the same time when you're wearing multiple hats because you get so locked into, oh, I know I shot this. I know that I shot this. If you give your editor a reference and creative guidance and then generally to add their own creativity to this, they're gonna play around, they're gonna look at every shot you got to know what exactly how to use it and use their own creativity to bring your vision to life. The next two shots that we're gonna be looking at were some of the studio pieces. And then this is the next shot that this goes into. So you can kind of see the light streaks from that overlay that I was talking about before. 
But this was very simple to light. We just had an Amaran F22, which had two layers of diffusion on it, as well as a grid. The grid just kills all the spill, but because we're so macro, we don't really care about the spill. And then we kind of had it tabled off on the side and set to this blue hue. And then you could see the edge of the light there. On the left side, I just had a small black card to add some contrast back to the image, but that was all it. I find shooting macro shots and stuff like this, you can really minimize your setup and you can just really focus on dialing in what you actually want to shoot and playing with your T-stop as well. A thing that everybody likes to do is when you're ever shooting on any lens is go down to the lowest T-stop. For this case, I'm shooting on a Vespid Prime and it goes down to 2.1. That's what I'm shooting at because this is an appropriate thing to do. But for this macro shot, because we're so close, our focus plane is razor thin. So you want to go to like an F8, F4, or anything in between. I know when I was shooting these, I was around F8, so I can get more things in focus so that I don't necessarily see one number in focus. And this also goes to positioning your product or whatever you're shooting. If I had this on more to the side, I wouldn't even see any of the numbers and maybe just the edge of one number. But I had to kind of flatten this off to give you that effect that we're close as possible to the stopwatch, but you can make everything out. The last shot that we're going to be looking at is the clock shot. And this is something that I want to bring to the piece in terms of this analog feeling, like one of those flippy clocks that you see in like old school track events and stuff like that. And I want to play around with all different aspects of lighting. So every clock felt different. As you can see in the last one, we set it to a blue color. And this one, we have a lot going on. So this appears that there's a light inside the clock and that motivates the light that we have going on the clock. So we have the F22 set up to a daylight color and that is position double diffuse with a grid, just giving general levels as, as well as acting as our key light. And then I also have a tube light in the background set to a red color that is just on the edge so that you see a little flare from the lens. Again, we're shooting with anamorphic lenses, so they're very flary and easy to do that. So, but I want to showcase that this is lit up kind of naturally. I know the red doesn't make sense, but this light specifically here, and this is actually a reflection. So what I did is I set up an aperture MC and it has a little soft box on it. And this is only at around like 1% and this is giving an orange reflection, like set at 2700 Kelvin. This was set to a red color and then this was set to 5600. A lot of color contrast. I could have said that to the to match it as well. Uh, but I just want to get really characteristic in terms of the lighting. So this is just a reflection from the MC on the edge of the clock. And then this was another happy accident because we actually had some light spilling in from the outside of the studio. And as the sun was setting, so it was very orange. And then five minutes later, that light disappeared as we were lighting this. So I put up another MC to emulate exactly what was happening. When I look at this, this just seems like this light is lighting up the number here. And this sells it even more because you have no light over here and then it's super dark on this edge of the frame. Just something that I thought was really cool and I really enjoyed this shot in terms of the motion as well as the lighting aspect too. And those are the key concepts and scenes that I want to break down in terms of this commercial that we shot. If you're interested in the full breakdown of this project from conception to execution, I have a video queued up here that explains that whole process. And as always, thanks for watching, subscribe for more, and I'll see you in the next video.